Using Stories for Marketing, The Basics. So how do you go about using stories for marketing? How do you take a form of communication that is designed to self-destruct like the start of Mission Impossible and use that as a way to draw in more visitors and to make more sales? Well, that's where you're going wrong to start with. If you're used to traditional forms of marketing, and if you have been creating ads and posts for Instagram and Facebook for a while now, then you might be accustomed to thinking in a more straightforward and direct manner. Marketing makes leads, and ads make sales. But in truth, stories are not for either of those things. Stories are perfectly suited not for increasing the number of followers you have, or for selling directly to those followers. So if that's the case, what is this form of marketing for? The simple answer is that it is for building stronger relationships with your existing followers. It's about deepening that connection, and that's huge when it comes to increasing profits in the long term. You might have heard of the book 1,000 True Fans by Kevin Kelly. In it, the author describes the value of creating meaningful relationships with your followers. He describes how as long as a business genuinely manages to obtain 1,000 true fans, it will likely be able to succeed. What is this based on? Simply the notion that a true fan is not only someone that will buy nearly every one of your products, but also someone who will like all your posts and who will rave about those same products to anyone who will listen. In short, a true fan is a brand ambassador. And it's through brand ambassadors that your business can begin to grow exponentially. How do you get to this point with your followers, though? And what does it have to do with stories? There are a lot of ways you build true fans. One is by having a very clear mission statement for your business. One is by knowing precisely who your business is for, meaning that you understand the psychology of your buyer persona. But the other is through meaningful interactions. And in the case of stories, that can also mean building a personal brand. Stories for trust, engagement, and personal brands. It is common knowledge that most buying behavior is based on emotion rather than logic. We buy things because we see them in the store think they look desirable, feel tired, and are worried we'll miss out if we don't buy. That's why, often, when we go away and really think about a purchase prior to making it, we decide better of it. With emotion being such a key factor when it comes to spending, it should be no huge surprise to learn that we are more likely to buy when we feel that we really know, understand, and like the seller. Better yet, if we feel that the seller has views that agree with our own. This puts us at ease. We feel better about buying from someone we know because we feel it's less likely they're going to try and con us. Likewise, we often want to please the seller. Finally, if we feel that their beliefs are aligned with ours, then we might feel as though buying from them will in some way align us with them and help to strengthen our sense of identity. And that's where stories come in. Many businesses will create a lot of marketing and advertising that is highly polished and staged. Products look perfect with ideal lighting and professional-looking backdrops while the personality selling the product is never shown. We feel very detached from these kind of brands, which is why the average person doesn't exactly shed a tear when they feel that a big corporation is going bankrupt. This is even more true when it comes to selling B2B a lot of the time. This method is getting increasingly old-fashioned, though, as the company in question fails to build any trust, to demonstrate anything that would make it unique or stand out, or to demonstrate any personality. If you run an online business, then your Instagram account might have the same problem. It might well be filled with lots of stunning-looking images of products, or perhaps lots of inspiring quotes, or photos of your lifestyle that are designed to look perfect. This is the image you want to portray. And you know that by including even one unpolished-looking photo, you will make the entire account look less messy. But this is where the nature of the story is ideal. This is a temporary image that will never be included on your profile. That means you can include anything you like here, and in 24 hours, it is going to be gone. This, in turn, means you're permitted to peel back the curtain just a little and to show your followers how the sausages are made, so to speak. Stories can be the kinds of insights that you would never include on the main account, but that help to give you a little personality and help to make you seem much more approachable. Let's say, for example, that you are a high-profile lawyer. You could use stories to share aspects of your life, not only the travel and nice hotels, but also your preference in sandwich, your gripes with the cues at your bank, you know, normal stuff. Likewise, a local business might share a story about a fun customer who came into their store or about the parade outside that is driving away customers. They might even include a photo of their dog 
or a short post about how they love the latest Marvel movie. Things like that might not sound like strategies that would gel with traditional approaches to business, but that should be considered a good thing. This is not a traditional approach to business, but a much more modern strategy for improving relationships. These posts don't need to be on topic, but they do need to be on brand in as much as they should allow a side of you and your business that you want to be seen. In the next video, you'll see just how this kind of interaction can not only strengthen relationships, but also invite meaningful interactions that translate to sales. If you're worried about being too personal, then you can use this kind of behind the scenes to show you setting up the shop or your staff enjoying drinks out. What's even more effective though, is if you choose to create a personal brand. Stories for personal brands. A personal brand essentially means a brand that puts the owner, that's probably you, front and center. Rather than promoting X company, you instead promote yourself as a sole trader. This doesn't necessarily reflect on the size of the company or even its structure. Most companies began as one or two people. It's rather a conscious decision early in the business's life to push the individual. And for all the reasons we've discussed, this is a very powerful thing. So instead of being RX Plumbing Limited, you might instead be John Dandy and Company Plumbing. The difference is that the John Dandy is a person that you feel you can know rather than a faceless company. Even if you never deal with John Dandy, the implication is that he's there, and that if you had a serious complaint, you could talk with John Dandy. And this opens up huge potential for marketing that otherwise would simply not exist. You can now, for example, do a live Q&A with your followers, and they can actually speak with the owner of the company. Likewise, you can show them some of the homes that you've listed and how you've helped them, and they'll not only get to see a demonstration of the great service you can provide, but will also get to see even more of your personality. Have you ever found that one plumber or electrician who you know does a good job and who you know will turn up on time, and then you never feel the need to use anyone again? What if you could become that service provider, even without ever having met the customers yet? Stories for Social Media Influencers There is one more group that should definitely sit up and take notice of stories. Social Media Influencers Scratch that. Most influencers are already all over stories because they know just how important they are. The group that should get involved, then, is the aspiring influencers group. The people who want to become influencers but haven't quite got there yet. And this goes for bloggers, too, because, like it or not, you're essentially just an old-fashioned type of influencer. An influencer is someone for whom the personal brand is the business. That's someone that inspires, entertains, or educates an audience to the point that the audience trusts their recommendations implicitly. The creative doesn't necessarily sell a product of their own, though they may but they have so much clout that they can generate huge amounts of cash from simply wielding their influence. For example, did you know that the going rate for a sponsored post on an Instagram account with 200,000 followers is $1,000? On YouTube, it's $1,000 for every 100,000 followers. That's big when you consider that there are plenty of accounts out there with over a million subscribers or followers. That in turn equates to $10,000 for a single post. On Instagram, it takes about two minutes to post an image. In other words, then, the potential ROI for a successful social account is gigantic. And how do you get to that point? Using stories is an absolutely essential way for all the reasons we discussed. It lets people come along on your outings and feel that they know you, that they're part of your story.